All right, Yunki, somehow my the VDC turned off. <laughs> Did you turn that off? <laughs> what? Welcome to Car Seeing Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis Hyundai and Kia cars. Plus other Korean cars that is KGM. What used to be Sangyong is now called KGM if you didn't know. Behind me today, I have a ton of Taurus EVX. I have all the exterior colors available out in the broad sunlight color of the exterior under the sunlight direct sunlight starting one by one there are seven exterior colors in total so latte grayage i assume that this is the color grand white is the car that we test drove on the way here and i think this was the signatory color of the taurus evx iron metal there you go so this one right here is the platinum gray and no doubt this is the forced green right here there is also dandy blue i don't think uh, we have it right here at the moment the last color right there is the space black i will try finding that dandy blue when possible let's get started with the exterior of this car and just look at that i love that mud splash and this is what kg mobility stresses with Taurus evx an ev that is a legit SUV. What they mean by that is they have the highest ground clearance. That really gets on your nerves from time to time because that's where all the battery packs are sitting. So you do need and want higher ground clearance, especially when it's an EV SUV, right? Because when a damage is applied to the battery packs, that is actually the last thing you want with the EVs because there might be fire starting and also there is tremendous amount of money involved when it comes to anything battery. So speaking of that, the ground clearance on the Taurus EVX, 175 millimeters high. One more thing that KGM stresses is the front angle. Let me give you a comparison to that of Hyundai Ioniq 5 right here. 18.8 for Taurus EVX on the front, while Ioniq 5 has 16.7 and 21.1 on the rear for Taurus EVX, while Ioniq 5 gets 27.7. However, the Taurus EVX also does have a bit of a downside compared to other competitors in the market, the wheelbase of these two cars. Taurus EVX is not made from a specific platform unlike other competitors in the market. It borrowed the platform straight from the internal combustion Taurus that we used to get. Therefore, the wheelbase it is 2,680 millimeters, and that is much shorter than the competitor that Taurus EVX has listed, for instance, um, EV6, 2,900 millimeters. Ionic 5, 3,000 millimeters. I mean, that is what gets directly translated into a cabin space. However, if you've been in Taurus before, you will be surprised by how spacious it is, not just inside, but it has a ridiculous amount of trunk space. And check that out, automated tailgate right there not really something that you see every day in the classes like these cars this car kind of sits between tucson and santa Fe, sportage and sorrento when comparing it to Gia. so that's where this tour sits however just look at this <laughs> just massive massive trunk and i did review internal combustion engine spec tours back in jeju and i did meet that car without having the intention of reviewing the car because i did need a car in jeju however i still remember how blown away i was tours provides ridiculous amount of space and that is also the case with the tours evx as well so you could of course take that off there's some sunscreen or luggage screen right here or not Yes, you can. <laughs> so take that off. You can also fold the second row seat. And I think it's going to be... So um, I do see a little bit of an angle. And also there is a little gap in between the seats like so, as you can see. KGM also stresses that the car is for the campers as well. And you can see how roomy it is. Wow. Look at the headroom I get. This is just uh, ridiculous. I can set it to recline even that deep. This is the first click. You can get up to two clicks with the second row seat. Use this as a coat hanger too. Also a rubber finish right here. What? Look at that. <laughs> wow. You have a tray for both of the seats. 
oh wow and some storage underneath as well and as you can hear this is made out of all plastics c type charging ports two of them on the rear ac vents for the second row seat slide the passenger seat from here and tilt the passenger seats although manual there is a sunshade like so it's not completely powered window unlike the front row seats the steering wheel of Taurus EVX self-explanatory buttons on the left on the right is for the intelligent active smart cruise control self-explanatory intuitive it definitely has design of its own when it comes to the KGM definitely is different from what we have seen from Hyundai Motor Group family I'll, I'll give you that so this is the key fob for the Taurus EVX still has that manual key i mean it does look quite outdated for a brand new car but i personally do really love this fidget spinner if you will <laughs> all right so start the car up the button is right here so when you see that that means the car is all good to go it's all started so there is nothing no physical buttons interior except for the hazard lights all of the other things are put on the display it is flickering like crazy so let me use my smartphone for this one so there is no physical button inside the car so you actually do have to start the car up in order to use this trunk feature so when opening it works with a push of a tap of a button but when closing you actually have to hold on to it and once it starts closing yeah i can lift my finger up it's gonna close automatically like that so that's uh, where the trunk button is all the other things self-explanatory the defroster honestly this ui if you haven't used or driven sangyong or kgm before of course it's going to take some time because it's different not a rocket science to be honest you will get used to this in a few hours i'll give you that oh even if you have the hazard lights on actually it works as the matrix pattern it's a sequential turn signals as well Infocon, you can actually use this feature when you download it on your smartphone app. By the way, it is a 12.3 inch dual monitors, right and left. We see all the buttons, information necessary for operating the vehicle and driving the vehicle. This is the noise that Taurus EVX makes. Listen to that. And Taurus EVX focuses a lot on off-road. The SUV being the SUV if you know what I mean. There is this camper setup right here that Taurus EVX has. I recently also have test driven Santa Fe that also has a rooftop tent and Taurus EVX also looks amazing with the tent installed up on the top. You can have a little bonfire going. By the way, this is the 20 inch wheel, the typical EV type of a wheel that has the shield and all the covered up patterns. It has a good traditional five spokes as you can see, got the diamond cutting finish around it. The front discs actually have the ventilated rotors if you can take a look at it right there so it comes with the ventilated rotors on the front McPherson on the front multi-link on the rear for the rear it's just the disc brakes but as we know when it comes to the EVs there is always that region brake that is working 24 7 in order to maximize the driving distance plus braking and stopping the vehicle all right well it's all set up right here so I actually do want to climb up feel and see and notice the difference right away but it sure is just as spacious as it was it looks really cozy and I know it is cozy when you get inside because I've been there done it so look at this oh wow and I'm not reviewing the rooftop today so I want to tell you about the Taurus EVX more but it just doesn't get any better when it's connected hooked up together with EV cars right oh so they got the whole chabak set up right here chabak is korean which means sleeping inside your car definitely a big thing here in korea spending your time together with the car out in the mother nature and oh yes of course there is the v2l there is no v2l inside unfortunately but well at least there is the v2l outside 
which stands for vehicle to load and you can have your power outlet connected directly to the car and you can use all the battery that Taurus EVX has got to offer down to 20%. And that is also one of the symbols from Korean national flag, all connected and set up. And ooh, they got the digital bonfire running. Some of the Bluetooth speakers right there, the coffee pots, anything electric, anything you run in your household, this car actually can run it no problem. And I forgot to mention this DRL look on the front. This is uniquely towards EVX because that is not the design we saw from the ICE version. ICE version had the headlights integrated right above there as well. The headlight has moved down and is located right here. Another Korean flag, national flag, essence embedded right on here, including front as well. So let me give you a close up look of the Taurus EVX. It also has a uh, welcoming light ceremony as well. I'll try to capture it momentarily. What do you say? This is the front look of Taurus EVX. I think it looks amazing. It is gorgeous. Yet another beautiful Korean car, KDM right here. So that is the 18 inch wheel that our test driver currently has slapped on. It gets the best driving mileage. It's running on 225, 60, 18 inch wheels. It's from Nexen called Rodian GTX. And we can see that it's EV and SUV specific. So these tires are developed for EV SUV explicitly. And over here is the 20 inch wheels and tires, 245, 45, 20. The same tire is slapped around Rodian GTX EV SUV. For your information, this portion right here is just for the looks. So, I mean, you could probably hang some kind of string, but nothing that requires any um, physical support. Do not attach it to here. This is just an accessory attached on the bonnet. It's been the case throughout the tours, including the ICE, the same thing with the EVX as well. And this is another KGM car, just a big badass Rexton Con, I believe. So it is the Rexton. Just look at this car. So it's got the Cajun mobility written right here. That's a loud reverse chime, but it's better that way, I think. All the gear selector is located right here. The parking light actually comes on when you put it into neutral, press it, and then it goes into the parking. And of course, push it one more time, it's now reverse and comes in with the surround view cam just like so and it makes a hell of a beeping noise <laughs> push it down and then you can see which lever we are at when you see that green icon that means the car is ready to go all right so you can go into the vehicle auto hold that is for the downhill and you can also have the view right here also change your drive modes here eco right now this is the comfort and also sport like so. I want to put it into comfort and there's also the trunk button here and you can have the heated steering wheel on as well and go to climate and I'm going to have the heated seats on. I actually want to read off some numbers here. So the car we're driving today is two wheel drive, single motor, front wheel driven car that has 152.2 kilowatt motor that pushes out 207 horsepower along with 34.6 kilogram force meters of torque that will deliver zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 8.1 seconds. It's not the fastest car, fastest EV out there. Yes, and it is just over 200 horsepower. However, it is precisely what this Taurus EVX pursues to be. a just great commuter daily driver SUV. An EV that truly is an SUV after all, because the market actually has been missing out on that for quite some time now. I'll talk about this more on the way and let's get started and move along. All right, so the telescopic, it's all manual. Honestly, you don't really change your steering wheel position once you set it, so. If you can save some cost on that one, why not? Unless you are actually driving the car together with your family member or friends. All right, Yunki, somehow my the VDC turned off. <laughs> <laughs> Did you turn that off? Yeah. All right, well, speak it off. Let's hit it. Okay, well, still is an AV after all, though. There is that instant torque, of course, car having no transmission due to the nature being. And I'm not going to slow down on the speed bump. Let's see how it does. Wow, let's see how it does. 
Wow, all right, much shorter wheelbase. I feel that immediately. First hop and second hop, just like that. First hop and second hop, just like that. I could actually feel that short wheelbase right away when I was going over the speed bump because, well, so much so I'm kind of used to driving Hyundai Motor Group cars, the EGMP built EVs. The shortest wheelbase they have out in the market is 2,900 millimeters, which is the EV6, 3,000 millimeters, Ionic 5, full throttle. What? What? <laughs> full throttle. What? What? <laughs> How come you never got this, Yuki, when you were driving? Because I always turn on the... <laughs> How come you never got this, Yuki, when you were driving? Because I always turn on the... <laughs> Alright, full throttle. Alright, this makes sense now. So that means, actually, the car actually does have a legit VDC. It's actually controlling the wheel spin, utilizing the full motor power to both of the front wheels adequately. I am flooring it just like I did a few minutes ago. What? I'm not hearing any wheel spin at all. As we saw earlier, the tires slapped on this Taurus EVX is EV and SUV explicit, specifically designed tires. So that is one of the reasons why perhaps we got a little more slip than it's supposed to. Maybe, maybe not. All right, so um, wide open road. Uh, let's turn on the driving aid. Integrated into one button. Adaptive smart cruise control activated. All the buttons tied to the smart cruise control is on the right steering wheel position right here you can actually set the distance into five levels just like so all the info is also shown on the right hand where the steering wheel buttons are located and there are many information being displayed on the main cluster so there is no hud on Taurus evx however we get all the necessary information shown on the display and let me set that to level five and is it going to distance itself of course it should and it does. So we're getting a little more gap between the car and the front, just like so. And the steering wheel it is um, not too light, not too stiff. And the steering wheel diameter, I think it's quite big. It's been the case with the Taurus internal combustion engine as well. D-shape right here and a giant holes right here. You're not going to get any cuts. However, it could have been a little more smoother. And the pedal shifters, it looks like it's all the way back here. So it feels like you have to press here, but you don't. You actually, the pedal shifters are right here where they're supposed to be, as you can see it right on this video right now. Of course, you can set the strength of the region brake using left and right. It also comes with the automatic region brakes and automatic mode as well if you want to leave it all to the car to do its work. Being in the driver's seat, the driver cockpit, I can really feel the much higher and cleaner line of sight compared to other SUVs. I do see the tip of the my bonnet right there just a little. Once again, Taurus EVX just borrowed the platform to chassis straight from the internal combustion engine model. So it has exactly the same exterior look except for the DRL and the taillight, a little bit of a gadget over there but the look wise the exterior wise the bonnet exterior the door panels everything it's the same this car is not the largest SUV you can find out in the market but despite the fact being I do get a very clean line of sight I get nice rear view mirror view as well gigantic side mirrors that gets the job done would have been nice if we did get that flag type glass right here because that is always my favorite, regardless of the car that I drive. Because the lesser that there is the blind spot, better it is, hands down. You could literally save a life if you have that tiny flag glass. Doesn't mean that the Taurus EVX lacks in safety. It's just that it's better to have the flag type glass. Side mirrors are actually attached on the doors. They could have done it if they wanted to, but again, all the cars you see out in the streets, 80% of them don't have it. So side mirrors are gigantic big enough it doesn't really feel all that stuffy given the nature of the car being now that i am on the freeway the car also comes with the automatic lane change assist intelligent smart cruise control or intelligent cruise control was it it comes in real handy it's a must regardless of the car being an ev or ice makes a day and night difference and definitely takes away all of the burdens most of the burdens driving long distances it is just doing the 
great job. I've been using it for some time now and definitely on par with any of the other cars out in the current market. I've been saying this a number of times already every time I drive an EV, but this smart cruise controls are the best hooked up with an EV. There is no transmission. There is no funny moment where the ECU, TCU is all puzzled whether they should shift down or shift up. There's none of that with the EV. It's either more power or less power or using more of the region brake or not and vice versa. Going back to the pedal shifter I told you about, actually press hold pedal shifter on the left. It will actually turn into smart region brake mode where it gets smart and it will use the necessary region brake level according to the driving condition. I am getting more familiar with the vehicle now. I am reading some numbers off of the odometer and it's telling me the instant efficiency information on the screen. So as soon as I hit the uphill, kilometers per kilowatt hour is dropping down like crazy. Now it's dropping down to 3.4. When it was cruising, it was shooting up to 5.6. And I think I've also seen a six kilometer figure. Right now it's reading 2.4, 2.3. And I actually like it because it's not lying to us. And as we hit downslope right now, it's 8.3 <laughs> and 10.2. We're gliding right now. It's, 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 just, it's reading 999. <laughs> this is the clutch trick that I used on the manual cars, right? I would actually just press on the clutch and then just glide down. The MPG will skyrocket. It has the same thing. So this is the moment where you actually need to overtake a car and need some power. So flooring it. Let it let go of the accelerator. I'm at 100 kilometers. I am 100 kilometers and I am flooring it. So there is, of course, a long way to go for this 200 horsepower EV car, but it gets the job done. You can actually drive on freeway, no problem. If you are in the market of needing more power, of course, there are other EVs that you can take a look at. However, this is a great commuter city car, family car that comes with gigantic storage inside. And one thing I like about the Smart Cruise Control setup system here is that you can actually set your speed real fast. It responds really quick. When it comes to Taurus and Taurus EVX, the inside volume, how much space you get inside the vehicle is just outrageous. And this Taurus EVX also has 839 liters of luggage space inside, which is definitely the largest one in its category and segment. I think the video is also doing a great job showing you all that, but it's one of those cars that you really have to see it for yourself and test it out for yourself. Let me talk about the performance. All right, just cutting off, cutting us off like that. It wasn't the fastest reaction I could anticipate, but it wasn't bad. And it wasn't like slamming on the brake, unlike other cars. I mean, I like how the car actually behaved right over there. Although I had the shortest distance, I had the bar stack at one for the distance, but it's keeping a fair amount of distance uh, with the cars in the front. I actually do like it. When we started off today's test drive, it was at about 480? 470. 470 something, giving us the reading at about 470 something. So it is definitely more than what the manufacturer has measured to be. And do keep in mind and keep in factor that it's not winter, but it's kind of chill out here in Korea today. It is eight degrees Celsius. And you guys all know what winter means when it comes to EVs. And I think it really is great given the condition being. And of course that number is only gonna go up during the summertime. Maybe we could see like 500 kilometer figure two during the summertime. Though. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, right? Far more than 433 kilometers that KGM has proposed to be. The battery management system is borrowed from BYD. LFP, so it's not the lithium ion battery unlike uh, competitors. However, it is the LFP. The warranty on this is 10 years with 1 million 
million kilometers. I'm not wrong, I double triple checked, it's actually one million kilometers. And that's how confident that KGM is with LFP. KGM also admitted that it has low energy efficiency compared to the ion batteries, but they actually came up with a technology called cell to pack, where they have eliminated the process making the module out of a cell. I really do like this kind of um, cooperation between the manufacturers. Of course, both of the manufacturers do save their money and time and resources on the R&D, focus and distribute the other remaining resources on wherever necessary. And if it wasn't the conjunction together with BYD, I don't think we would have even seen this Taurus EVX props to that and it's not the first time it's not just with the EV we have seen what Toyota Supra working together with BMW AMG engines being used everywhere here and there why not for an EV actually it's much more feasible and easier and possible for EVs to work together because essentially there are less components put into an EV so there are manufacturers that hopefully you know we'll see more of these because that means more choices for us customers to choose from it's definitely a plus for Taurus EVX there are two trims of E5 and E7 the test driver I'm driving today is E7 they essentially look quite alike on the outside and also the interior but of course has uh, different trims and you actually do have a wider choice of options available when you choose the E7 trim and there is a multiple speed bumps Yep, short will they <laughs> And there's a multiple speed bumps. Yep, short will they <laughs> I've spent good amount of time with 2024 KGM Taurus EVX now, both on the freeway and cities. The Smart Cruise Control, it is on par with any other manufacturers out in the current market. In some way, I actually do like it better on Taurus EVXs. The algorithm, the way it responds, actually it feels better. And just like so, when you are accelerating, again, not the fastest EV you can find out in the market, but it gets the job done. It just pushes the car out without a stress. I don't think it lacks in any of the factors when it comes to a family SUV EV a city car commuter car getting from point A to B and also spending time inside the car there is not a single car that can meet all of the demands however this Taurus EVX checks a lot of boxes I really do like the car for what it is because I really liked the Taurus internal combustion engine model too Taurus EVX feels like a motor and battery put in that internal combustion engine model I don't really see much of a difference other than that however that essentially is a lot of um, EV cars out in the current market there was Corando EV as well but it wasn't really the best EV that you can find in the market so that being said I think it is a great car a great second EV for KGM to penetrate the market props to KGM keep it coming the more there are the more choices there are for us customer it's always the better why not take a look at KGM Taurus EVX if you're in the market looking for an EV SUV like this and as they propose it's the real SUV that's made out of an EV. All right, so that's it for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and like Cars in Korea if you did. And I will see you in the next video. And I really do hope to bring more of the Cajun Mobility or Sangyong cars to you. It just, I never don't have an access to it. But a big shout out to my boy, my friend, Yunki of Yunki Ride right here. He invited me to today's event. Thanks to him, big shout out to him. Definitely do go check out his channel. He also runs another channel in English. And I will see you in the next video.